This is a continuation of GPU pass-through. This is part two, setting up the virtual machine. Now in part one, we blacklisted our graphics card. In this part, we're setting up the virtual machine to utilize that secondary graphics card. A couple notes here I wanted to answer. I've gotten emails and comments from the part one of the video. This is meant for advanced users and there's some criteria to it. One, you need two different types of graphics cards and those graphics cards, one of them can't be used in your Linux box. Many people have sent me requests and said, hey, how do I take my one graphics card and pass it through to the Windows machine? You can't do that. You need two graphics cards and they have to be two different graphics cards. So very important to note. And again, this is meant for advanced users and I understand it appeals to a very small number of the population, but many people had requests for this video to be made. So I wanted to go ahead and finish out this series with a part two so you can get native Windows games working in a Windows VM utilizing a separate graphics card. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump onto our desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our virtual machine. Go ahead and open Virtual Machine Manager and we'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine. From here, we need to select our ISO media, hit forward. We need to select where our Win ISO is on your drive. Go ahead and select it. Um, you can obviously add a directory if needed, if your images are in another directory. Mine is in this custom uh, home folder. So I went ahead and added this with the plus sign down here so I can get all my ISOs. So with your ISO selected, it should automatically detect the source. If it doesn't, you can actually just go ahead and untick it, tick it again. You saw that it didn't show it and then Windows 10. So we'll go forward from here. Now for the actual topology, I highly recommend eight gigs of memory if you have 16 to 32 gigs, which is highly recommended for any kind of virtual machine because remember you have to run two separate operating systems here and I like them to be rather beefy. So optimal settings is memory eight gigs, CPUs four if you have an eight core or higher CPU. If you don't have an eight core or higher CPU, um, two will have to suffice, not recommended or not optimal, but it will still work just fine. Next, set up your storage. I highly recommend at least a minimum of 50 gigs. And then we want to customize before installation. Um, everything else, you can go ahead and leave normal. Now, right here, when you do this screen, this overview screen right here, you will only have one chance to get this. If you go ahead and hit begin installation, this disappears and will never show up. Change this from BIOS to UEFI. And then you'd hit apply. So a couple of things I want to do on this section is go to the topology, manually set, take this to one sockets and then change it to four uh, and this up to here to four. I never change threads or sockets past one because most systems only have one CPU. And honestly, with my specific system, I have eight cores, 16 threads. So I only want to take four cores with one thread. Uh, this is the optimal setup for any uh, system where it has eight cores. Now, if you don't have eight cores and you only have four cores, it should look something like this. You want about half of what your system has because you want to split and give half to the virtual machine and half to the actual native machine. And this is kind of that setup. If you only have a quad core and want to do this, this is how I would configure it. So the other thing we need to actually add in as the final step is adding our GPU that has been blacklisted on our Linux system and that will be exclusive to this virtual machine. So we'll go ahead and add hardware, go down to PCI, host device, and then we just scroll down to the device ID you're passing through. And you'll notice over on the right hand side what you actually have. So most of them have this little label. Now we need this machine right here but we also need to grab the HDMI audio from it as well. So we'll go ahead and add again, PC host device, and this one for the audio. Now that we have the GPU and the GPU's audio, we can go ahead and add the actual device in and start it. So this is added, we can go over and start the machine. Now for this machine, I am passing into an actual uh, capture card device here just so you can see it uh, as it is on the machine itself. Now, normally you wouldn't have a capture card. 
you would actually have a secondary monitor or if your monitor has two inputs, another HDMI input, you could actually go directly into the other source of the monitor and then just hit input to switch over to your Windows box. Before doing this though, make sure you pull up the Windows machine and hit open. From the open screen, all you need to do is go view, console, and then click in there. From here, we can actually see the console over on the second screen. So let me go ahead and flip over. All right, so now we're on the desktop of our Windows machine. This is a virtual machine running inside my Linux box. From here, we need to install the vert IO drivers, which uh, you can add those through the details command on the virtual machine. Now to install the vert IO drivers on your host machine, go from the view pane, go into details, and then click on the CD-ROM drive right here. Make sure vert IO is selected out of your ISO selections. Now, if you don't have vert IO, I will leave a link to the Fedora project where you can come into here. It's under direct downloads about midway to towards the end of this document. They list all their actual releases of vert IO. You want the stable ISO, ISO right here, download this and put it where your ISOs reside. And that way you can attach it to your virtual machine. Now with that attached, let's go ahead and flip back over to our Win 10 box. So we'll come in here, go back to console. Now, if we pull up this PC, you'll notice the vert IO. Go ahead and hit open. And then we just need to run the actual setup program. I highly recommend running the guest agent right here and going install. Another method is once you have this CD drive installed, you can go into right click here, go into device manager, and then anything with a caution symbol, you would simply right click it and then hit update or install driver, browse, and then simply select the CD-ROM drive. With the CD-ROM drive installed, you go ahead and hit OK and it includes the subfolders. And then next, and it would find that driver. Almost anything with a caution symbol other than your graphics card should be found and you'll see such devices such as like the red red hat qxl controller this is actually another uh graphics card basically for the virtual machine i go ahead and disable this after i have the pass through working perfectly and initially out of the box i run a two monitor setup and just mirror it and on a low res and then i once i have all this driver installed and i have the actual host machine and this machine working i go ahead and disable this driver and solely only work off the HDMI pass through into this input because I know everything's set up properly. Now, let's say you need to change something in the XML file. Let's say you have an NVIDIA driver and you need to change and isolate it so NVIDIA doesn't know you're running a virtual machine. There's a lot of guides out there and they can get very convoluted. The first question any newbie into the space asks is where the hell is the file to edit? And that is a very good question. So let's go ahead and pull up terminal. And from terminal, um, you need to actually type this command right here, sudo versh edit, and then your virtual machine name. Mine's Windows dash 10. You hit enter. Also note, if it does not find it, chances are you didn't use the sudo command and sudo is needed. Now, one of the things you need to do is down towards the Hyper-V section right in here. You'll notice I added a couple things. One, the vendor ID line, state anything. This is set up to basically uh, trick NVIDIA CPUs or GPUs not to actually recognize this as a virtual machine. And then right below the closing Hyper-V here, I added KVM, hidden state on, and then I closed KVM. These four lines that I added basically hide the virtual machine from your graphics card. And now we can start up Windows and pass through our NVIDIA graphics card is how this is set up. AMD, you don't have to do any of these hacks out of the box. It should work just fine. Now, one last thing to note is some people have problems with capturing the mouse and keyboard. If you are using your host mouse and keyboard not passing through another USB keyboard and mouse, I highly recommend going full screen on your main monitor clicking into it, and then switching your input. This can be a little tricky. Sometimes a lot of people leave it in windowed mode and that causes issues with, you know, the mouse going off the screen and then to an, into another uh, 
instance or hitting a title bar or something on the host machine, just don't do that. Make sure you're capturing your, your cursor and keyboard by doing full screen, that way you don't lose it. And then we do our standard cleanup with UAC. I highly recommend running my debloat script and then also uh, installing video drivers. From here, the virtual machine will be all set up and ready to go. So I hope that demystifies the secondary GPU pass-through. I hope this helps. I may do a follow-up video over Looking Glass. However, based on the complexity of the subject and a lot of the feedback I got, I don't know if that video will be made or not. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this series, and I'll you know take those into consideration and may make a part three going over Looking Glass. But with that said, guys, I'll see you on the next video.